Hey guys, this is Tasha from the Scruffy Fam. We are outside. I'm gonna be filming our very first garden tour. Pretty excited. This is the first time that we really had a garden that felt like was worth touring. Um, so you can possibly see behind me, I got my uh, chicky ladies out here with us and let's get going. All right, so what I'm gonna start with first, and I'm not really sure if you can tell in this branch here, this is our mulberry tree. Uh, now we had no idea that this was a mulberry tree. Um, and as you can see, our chickens are greatly enjoying the fruit that falls on the ground. All right, so over here on the side of the house, I'm gonna sneak through here real quick and hopefully the chickens don't notice that the gate is open. As much as I can sneak with my belly anyway. So this over here, there is some hostas and miscellaneous, but most of this is our raspberry patch. Um, and I think, not 100% sure whose property these are on, um, but we did get some cuttings of it and they are growing in our front yard now. So we're pretty excited about that. I don't know if you can quite tell in here. We've got our first little ripe raspberry right here. I'm gonna, whoops. There we go. Let the season begin. Lock that back up, make sure the chickens don't escape. garden bed. I'm going to start here. Um, so this little guy is looking a little bit rough. Uh, this is our sage. This actually was in the ground next to the chicken coop when we moved in. And we dug it up and didn't really want to just lose it so we stuck it in the pot. And this little guy has survived uh, really cold weather and chipmunks digging in it and most recently chickens jumping into it. This pot used to be over there by our little gate and the chickens realized that they could jump into it and then jump over the gate. So we've moved it over here um, hoping that it will kind of make a comeback. It's looking a little bit sad but we'll see. And this one is really an experiment. Um, we obviously had a ton of dandelions in our yard but um, tried to use most of them for flowers and wasn't able to get very many roots and so we took one of the flowers that had gone to seed and literally just like sprinkled it over this pot um, kind of hoping that these will grow up that's not a dandelion that's a weed huh, that's funny a weed in a dandelion patch yeah that's me um, kind of hoping that these guys will get a little bit bigger and then come fall I will actually harvest the roots from these guys and then I have no idea what we'll do with this pot afterwards. <laughs> this pot here has nothing in it now. This is where some of our onions were growing. Um, and we've harvested all of those. So currently it is just dirt and mulch. Okay, so here's our first full bed. And all of its... Uh, late spring early summer glory <laughs> this really was our spring bed so there's not as much in here now and a lot of things are starting to kind of taper off a little bit so as you can see from this um, string here is we were doing the square foot method and i think it actually worked out really well i like it um, it gave us a lot of food and it was a really nice way chickens it was a really nice way to make sure that we could fit everything in. Um, so this first square here, these were our onions. 
Um, and then we had, <laughs> I forgot to take the tags out, they're still sitting in here. Um, and then we had three squares of radishes, three squares of spinach. Those all did fairly well. Um, they got decently big before it got hot. Um, back here is carrots that I sowed in, technically in the same square as the peas. Um, but, you know, the peas are up against the very back so they could go up the trellis. So I figured I have empty space, so I put carrots in there. We're waiting for those to get um, at least a little bit bigger before we harvest them. And then here's our peas, which I am very, very pleased with. We have gotten a ton of food off these guys, um, and everyone in our family loves eating them. The four-year-old, the two-year-old, and the 15-year-old <laughs> all eat the peas. Um, and they just keep climbing and producing even though we've been in 90 degree weather. Oh look, there's a chipmunk trying to run through my garden. <sighs> Bane of my existence. Anyway, so as I was saying, we've had some really hot days and they're still growing, still producing. We're starting to get some yellowing down here at the bottom, um, but I'm not super worried because the fact that they've lasted this long is kind of a bonus. Over here, this is the beet. Um, so we have, oh, I see some weeds in here. Um, so this one square right here is all early wonder tall top. And this square over here is actually a mixed combo of seeds that I had. However, from looking at them, I think it also was a lot of early wonder tall top or something similar to that. Um, so, yeah, these beds did not get weeded quite as uh, efficiently as I would have hoped. And you can see we have some bug damage on the leaves now. Um, they're really starting to struggle in the heat. Um, we were just kind of hoping to get them a little bit bigger. But I think we're probably going to go ahead and harvest these in the next day or two while we have some cooler temperatures um, and get them put away, probably pickle them, just like we did the other ones. The kids and I really enjoy that, and it's a great source of iron, so yay. Over here, this was my experiment. Um, so, didn't know until I'd already done it that peas don't like being transplanted. So, there is one, two, three, four, and I, I think there might have been a fifth one. I think one died, I'm not entirely sure. There's a couple of pea plants over here that I started with the winter sowing method and then transplanted over here. Um, and as you can see, these guys, this whole wall, they were all direct sown long after these little ones were transplanted. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely um, not bothering with this again. We're just going to direct sow next year. Here is our other large bed. Um, it's kind of a mess. <laughs> so the intent here was that, um, so this is a six by six bed, and we knew that I was pregnant when we planted this, and so the idea was we actually have little stone pavers in here, um, which I think are two by two, and there's two of them. So the idea was that I could step on that to get kind of into the middle of the bed to weed or harvest or whatever. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, you can tell that didn't work out. So we were planning for this to be potatoes back to the corner and then over until it was like even with the pavers. And then this strip here was meant to be corn. Uh, our corn did not work out very well. I think a chipmunk came through and dug up most of the kernels before they really got a chance to germinate. And we had a really hard time keeping it uh, moist enough for germination also. So, nothing ended up growing over here in this section. Um, I'm fairly certain, and we'll cover that in the herb one. 
so as you can see, these potato plants, they're starting to die back. Um, we have three different varieties, which I will have to double check the exact names. Um, I'll put a little thing at the bottom of all the varieties that we're doing, put it down in the description. Um, so they have flowered and now they are, you can see kind of here in the middle, we're starting to get some yellow dieback. So probably a few more weeks to a month and we will be um, harvesting these guys. Okay, so uh, one thing that we noticed was that not all of this was actually potato because we came over and found this. I am fairly sure that this is some kind of tomato plant that volunteered, grew up into the, or through the straw, and now is producing fruit. But it's the oddest, woo, hi spider. It is the strangest little fruit that I've seen. And the leaves don't look like our other tomatoes. So I'm really not sure what this plant is. Um, at this point, I'm kind of just thinking once the potatoes die back, we will know what of this mess is potato and what is not. So <laughs> we shall see. Some of these are definitely potatoes. I definitely saw potato flowers. Um, yeah, uh, it's a hot mess. Um, the bed when we first moved into this house last November, this bed had five or six really big tomato plants that were dying back. Um, but because the previous owners were selling, they didn't really have time to come out and harvest and clean up. And so there was a bunch of fruit that had fallen onto the dirt and just kind of decomposed. So we knew that this bed was going to struggle with tomato volunteers and I have pulled countless numbers of them from over here where we were trying the corn. So yeah, we'll do more stuff with this bed before next year, but in the meantime it's kind of an interesting adventure. So over here at the bottom of our stairs, I will uh, We'll cover this in more detail. I'm going to do a video all about the herbs that we have here on our urban homestead. Um, but this is all chocolate mint. Well, almost all chocolate mint. Mostly chocolate mint. Which has provided lots of yummy treats. And so here we have a wall of grapes. They're starting to climb above the top of the trellis, um, but I think we found five plants, if I remember right. I have no idea what the varieties are. I have no idea how to grow grapes, um, so this is definitely an experiment. But we did find, back in here, we have some actual grape clusters. So that's pretty exciting. Um, We've talked about possibly next year tearing these grapes out and kind of restarting varieties that we know and then making sure that we can kind of trellis them the way that we want to, but we'll see. It kind of depends on how these guys produce this year. Okay, over here, we have our in-ground calendula, which is doing so much better than the potted corn, so go figure. And then this is our Purple Beauty pepper. Um, it's gotten really tall. It's got some very strange uh, leaf growth and plant or, um, bug damage. Not really sure what happened there, but you know, the new growth is nice and happy and the plant's perked up, so. Um, just found out the other day that plants can actually take a few years to reach maturity. So these guys will definitely be dug up at the end of the season and overwintered inside. 
And then over here is the jalapeno. And so this guy also has some of that same bug damage. We've never seen any critters on them, so I, I don't know what that is. Um, but they are, let's see if I can get in there, they are flowering. So this little guy is already starting to think about fruit. That's pretty exciting. My husband uh, despises bell peppers and loves jalapenos. So he's excited about this. And then over here, this little guy was another one of my experiments. This one is actually an ancho poblano pepper, an ancho poblano pepper plant. Um, that I actually started from seed. So these, there's this guy, and this little tiny one right there, uh, were started with the winter sowing method. They, uh, the method works okay, but I really needed grow lights and heat mats and all that stuff. Um, so they're definitely behind, but again, these guys are gonna be overwintered, so hopefully next year, we get a better show out of them. And this little guy I thought for sure would die because it was laying over with some of the stem broken, so I buried it really deep um, in the hopes that it would do something. And I think by the end of the season, it'll at least be able to overwinter and then hopefully we'll get some really great peppers out of it next year. Okay, so here are two of the tomato plants that I started from seed. These are Arctic Rose. They are a dwarf variety of uh, determinant. I think they're, I think they're Roma size. I don't entirely remember, um, but they've actually done really well since we got them in the ground. They were also winter sown, so obviously they're far behind where they would be if they had a proper uh, seed starting early life um, but they've actually they're doing pretty well and they're starting to get some little flower buds here and this guy has some flowers so I'm excited to see if we get anything off these guys um, again buried really super deep we've kept the lower leaves um, off the ground so that they don't get any diseases or anything I'm really excited to see how they do all right, so this guy here is our cherry tomato. Which is, let me check the tag here, black cherry. So you'll see we have some fruit in there. Nothing blushing just yet, um, but we've got plenty of flowers here and a couple of other baby fruits started. So I'm pretty excited. This and this guy here are my very first indeterminate tomatoes. So I'm very excited to see how big they've gotten already. Um, these are already bigger than my um, potted tomato that I have last year, so that's really exciting. This guy is a Cherokee purple. You can see we've got a bunch of fruit here. One of them split back there. I don't know if you can quite tell, but um, it scabbed over, so no need to pull it off or anything. And I'm really excited for this guy here to ripen up and um, <clears throat> try my hand at making an heirloom tomato sandwich. I have never had such a thing, and I keep hearing people rave about it. So there we go. Definitely my most successful this year is the cucumbers. This is actually two plants. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to tell it now, but this guy over here actually started way behind. And um, for a little while they weren't very happy because they didn't get in the ground right away. Um, but you can see they're starting to even try to send out some extra limbs here and we have cages in here which have been grossly um, 
inadequate <laughs> to make, contain them. So I think fairly soon we're gonna start just training them up the actual uh, fencing here on our deck. But the really cool thing is in here, we've got, oh, this guy's ready. I'm gonna move again. I can't, I should have brought scissors. There you go. There is our very first cucumber harvest. So last year we, so last year we grew cucumbers in pots um, and it was a bush variety. So it wasn't meant to get this big, but it had, I don't know if the pot was too small or if it just needed more water or what the problem was. But the fruit that it gave us was really misshapen. Like it was really fat on one end and then it came down to a point on the other end. It was very strange and they weren't super tasty either. So I'm really excited to see how these guys are doing this year. All right, so most of these guys, I'm gonna wait until um, we do the herb video because that's what most of them are. Except for this little guy here. This is our strawberry. Uh, we started this in a pot last year when we were in the duplex and it's hanging in there. It's starting to give us some fruit now. Um, it might just be a little bit of a later variety, but um, I'm not sure if we're gonna keep this guy around when we do our big strawberry patch or not. We'll see. So next is the Leafy Greens kiddie pool. Um, so I got this idea from Jess over at Roots and Refuge to do the kiddie pool. Super cheap, I think this one's like $4. Um, I did grow lettuce and kale in this exact same pool last year and it did great. They were actually like this tall um, and then probably about this time of year is when they started kind of flowering and dying back. Ours, as you can see, uh, have not had that kind of success this year. I think I got them in the ground just too late. Um, and then it just got really hot. So um, the lettuces, actually all of these were planted from starts that I bought. Um, I had tried to start some lettuce seeds and none of them really did very well. I think it just got really cold and then the watering, I'm not really sure what the problem was, but they didn't do very hot, but they didn't do too hot. Um, and so then the three in the middle are red boar kale and I've only had one that has managed to survive unscathed so far. Uh, the one in the middle got eaten down by something. I honestly, I don't even know what. Um, just came out one day and it was the only plant in the whole bed that had been stripped down to the spines. So something chomped on it. But as you can see, it's starting to regrow. And this little guy here got infested with some sort of critter. So Joe came out and harvested all of it. But um, it's trying to grow back, but at this point it's pretty hot. So I think we might just cut our losses, harvest as much of these as we can, maybe do a couple salads this next week and um, grow uh, start some new ones over in the shaded bed next to the chicken coop over by where the peas are. And last but not least, for our food garden anyway, is our blueberry plant. So this guy, guy was actually a start that we bought at Costco which is supposed to be really good for this region. Um, it had a whole bunch of flowers and was trying to grow berries when we first got it, so I picked all those off. It definitely has a bunch of new growth since then. We have it in this enormous pot with a really thick layer of uh, wood mulch. And blueberries like it acidic. So I mixed in a lot of our broken down wood mulch in with the soil. That should help acidify it. Um, but yeah, it's looking great so far. Really looking forward to getting some blueberries off of this in the coming years. All right, you guys, that is it for now. Um, there's obviously a lot more growing here. Um, some of it isn't going to be sticking around. We have a lot of perennials that we're going to be pulling. Um, and a lot of it actually is medicinal. Um, so I'm going to be doing a totally different video talking about all of our medicinal herbs. Some are wild. 
some I have planted, um, and some came with the house because the former owner planted them, um, which I'm very thankful for. So we will cover that in a little bit later, but for now, that was our garden tour. Today is July 12th, so mid-July summer garden, starting to really kind of ramp up, finally getting some harvest. Uh, spring garden starting to taper off and we probably are not going to be doing much of a fall garden due to the fact that um, we have 27 weeks on Monday and um, not going to make it past September so we might do some lettuce because it's super low-key and uh, they can pretty much survive anything but I think anything beyond that we're probably not gonna put too much effort into a fall garden this year which is a little bit sad but um, I'll be very excited to get into um, all kinds of new stuff next year even more experiments and with some of the lessons that we learned from this season so thank you for joining me today um, please like share definitely subscribe so that you don't miss any of our other videos um, and comment down below if you have any questions or if you want to see any other content. We have all kinds of stuff planned coming up for you guys. Um, and then in a couple months, you are going to get some adorable baby pictures. So there's always that. So thanks, guys. See you later. Bye.